Uh, if you don't do that, <laughs> I'm not supposed to cry. You got me going, girl. Well, uh, after the this service we've been having today, uh, I have a feeling that our little chestnut choir and the uh, and Jeff. Stephanie, Matt, all of you must have gotten together and looked at my notes and in advance and tried to preach my sermon before I got a chance. And that's not fair. Because y'all did a whole lot better job than what I could do. And so I just want to kind of maybe re reiterate or summarize a lot of what we've already heard today about the sanctity of life and share just a little bit of my experience. I'm so glad that, that uh, Matt, that you were the one selected to come from over here. Uh, Matt and I share a common kinship. Uh, we have met a few times, and I really enjoy getting to know Matt, but uh, Matt shared with you that he is the, the lone man at the, at the pregnancy center here in Gwinnett County. Well, I can identify with him. For two and a half years, I served on staff at Choices Resource Center, where the, the Cross of Pregnancy Center for uh, uh, Anderson County of, of Tennessee, and I was the only man on staff. Now, they didn't bring me on staff to reach the high shelf. <laughs> sure why they brought me on, but it definitely was not to get stuff off the top shelf. Uh, but I can relate a lot to what Matt was sharing with, uh, because I've been there. Started out as a volunteer in the counseling room, uh, served on the board of directors, and then they asked me to come and be on staff, and I loved that time there. And I have just uh, fascinating stories, uh, I, 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 stories that I will carry with me to the grave, things that I love about my ministry in a crisis pregnancy center like a Bria Medical Clinic. And they have the ability to do so much more than what uh, we did at this uh, place where I work. Uh, but of all the stories that I love to share, one of those stories is, is uh, how I had a great opportunity. Uh, as a, a man on staff, most of our clients were female, so I didn't even counsel those. Uh, I only counseled the men who came in for an STD test. Uh, so I would, I would counsel them, and, and even that was few and far between. But one of the opportunities that they gave me was uh, twice a week, we offered parenting classes, much like what Abrita offers. And so uh, the, a lot of times the knock on those who were like us who are pro-life, those, those who were not would say, well, you just want them to have a baby, and then you forget about it. And that's not true at all. In fact, uh, as Matt was sharing, they are now going to be able to minister to these ladies from the moment they find out they're pregnant all the way through pregnancy, and it doesn't end there. Because the parenting class is so crucial. Uh, after they would have a, a child, they would come to these uh, classes to learn how to be a better parent. They would earn, uh, we call them baby bucks, I'm not sure what you call them there. Uh, we, they'd earn baby bucks, so they would be able to go and, and, and shop in our room that had diapers and wipes. They were able to get formula and food and clothes. And sometimes we even were able to help them get car seats and cribs and other uh, necessities for a growing family. And so while they say, oh, you just want them to have a child and then you forget about it, that's not true at all. We want them to have a child because of the value of life. But we want to help them in their parenting. And, and we want to help this child even after birth. And I know Maria is the same way. And so... Uh, I would get the opportunity to go and teach these classes. This is even before I was a parent myself. I didn't have a clue what I was doing. I just went back to the Word of God. Use God. God's Word is my, my guide to how to be a parent. I still practice the same things today now that I am a parent. But uh, they would offer me the opportunity to share a devotion every single week before a person would come and teach those classes. And uh, through those devotions, I was able to see uh, dozens of these clients give their life to Christ. I remember one night I was there and I was sharing and, and it wasn't even uh, uh, particularly a gospel message per se, uh, but I was able to, to share the, the truth from Scripture and offer an invitation. And that night, in a room of probably about 20 uh, men and women, mostly women, I, it was six of them, gave their life to Christ that night. I tell you what, I walked to my car that night floating on air. What a great opportunity it is to minister to somebody who feels like there is no other option they have. They don't know where to turn next. They are in a crisis situation. They are overwhelmed. And we can share with them the love of God. They can turn their life to Christ and let Him 
change their life forever. And so I am forever indebted to great ministries like the Bread Medical Clinic. And I want to encourage you to support and to give and to volunteer and to pray for them. I have a message today that goes along with this same theme that we've been talking about all this morning. And I titled it, Designed and Created in Their Image. Now, I, I focus that word there, and you're going to see why in just a moment. If you have your Bibles, I would invite you to turn to Genesis chapter 1. Since we started uh, this uh, 2020 vision, and we began to read through the Bible, we are in this month in the book of Genesis. Genesis and Job. And uh, I know we've already been covering this before, but we're staying with this idea that God is the creator. And here in the book of Genesis, he points out the fact that he created life in their image. If you have your Bibles now turn to Genesis chapter 1, we're going to begin reading in verse 26. I want to invite you to stand this morning out of respect of the reading of God's Word. In Genesis 1, 26 we read, Then God said, Let us make man in our image according to our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him, male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them. God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Father, we ask that you bless the reading of your scripture here this morning. We pray that you pour out your spirit upon us and reveal your truth to us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, as we look at this great idea that God has given to us, that each and every one of us, you were designed and created in their image. We read that there in these verses. Then God said, let us, because God the Father is speaking to God the Son and God the Holy Spirit, the Trinity were right there in the first chapter of Genesis, let us, God the Father, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit, let us create man in our image and according to our likeness. So they were created in their image. As we look at these verses, we realize that God is a God of love. God loves you. That's why He created you in the image of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. He loves you so much that He des desired to create you. You know what? God could stop on day five of creation and said, that's good enough. Look, look at how beautiful everything is. Look, look at uh, uh, the, the, the morning sun. And look at the, the, as the sun goes down. Just how beautiful those colors are. Look at the, the landscape of a mountain and, and look at the, the crashing waves on the beach. And God could have said on day five, that is beautiful. That is what I created. But God didn't stop on day five. He decided to create humans on day six. And so God loves you enough to create you in His image. He didn't just design you just to, to have you and let you run a buck. No, He designed you and created you to reflect His image. In fact, of all of creation, of all the things that He created and all the things that we find beautiful in this world, He says that you are the most valuable of all. Because when we look at the first five days of creation, God always says, and it was good. He liked what He created. But what does He say at the end of day six? After He's now created man, indeed it was very good. You are the prized jewel of creation. He loved you so much that He created you above everything else. That's what He says, that man would, would rule over all this. You would have dominion. You would subdue it. You would be over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves on the earth. But he also says to be fruitful and multiply. He desires for life to continue on. 
not for you to play God and make decisions of your own. Now, in a room of this size and those in here today, you may have had a time in your life where you were in a crisis. You were in a moment where you didn't know what to do next. And right now, you're in a great decision you made. The, the, the statistics tell us that even in the churches in America, that there are uh, many women here today who are hurting from a decision you made maybe years and years ago. Maybe men, maybe you were involved in a situation that you are now struggling with. Well, praise God for sinners like Maria Medical Clinic and, and many others who help find healing after a regretful decision. Yes, you might have been in a cross, you may have been in a moment where you didn't know what to do next. But there are, there's healing. And don't carry around a burden that you uh, are now carrying. God wants to heal you because God loves you. God wants you to find His rest because He loves you so much. Not only is God a God of love, He's also a God of life. Do you know that in your body, you have 37.2 trillion cells. And in each one of those 37.2 trillion cells has your DNA planted inside of it. Your DNA is what makes you unique. It's what makes you you. And these cells, and in your DNA, God's plan for making you exactly who He wants you to be. He, your DNA is not an accident. It is not just circumstances. It is designedly created. In Psalm chapter 139, verse 13, it says, For you formed my inward parts. You covered me in my mother's womb. God Himself, in His creation, He designed the birthing process. He, he designed you. You were formed by God. And so when the, 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 your DNA was created, God had a hand in that. So when does your DNA begin? Well, Matt was sharing that with us just a moment ago. Your DNA starts at conception. The 23 chromosomes from the father come together with the 23 chromosomes by the mother and now form 46 unique chromosomes. Those chromosomes are your DNA. That happens at conception. So at the very moment that all this comes together, almost all of your unique features are formed at this time. Uh, your gender was determined at conception. The, the color of your hair and your eyes, your body type, your height, your, your, your blood type, all of that was formed at conception. Also, the, the baby at conception is already inheriting personality and how their intelligence is going to be transpired. And the, even some of the risk of health concerns later on in life are all formed at the moment of conception. Even though at this point in time of that, of that little baby and that little life, it is too young and, and too small for the human eye to see but not for God. God sees that growing child. Why? Because in Psalm 139, He formed it. He can see it because it's in His hand. He brought it all together. So God is a God of life. But also, it is the same God who looks after the innocent. He looks after those who can't speak, those who can't help themselves. You know, when we look at studies, when we look at the, the causes of death, we, we know some of those, those great causes. We know of heart disease. We know of cancer. We know there are some great tragedies of this world, but if you were to take uh, across the, the entire globe and you would take all of the, the, 
the, the deaths are caused by cancer, by traffic accidents, by alcohol, by smoking, by malaria, and those who are affected by HIV and AIDS, and you put all of them together, all of those causes of death around the world would still not equal up to the number one cause of death. In 2019, there were 42.4 million deaths from abortion. That's twice, that's double the number of all those other causes of death combined. That's 116,164 lives lost every single day. 4,840 lives lost every hour. 81 lives lost every minute. I'm sure you can already think that's over one per second. The lives that cannot speak for themselves. God is looking out for them. God loves their life. God is the one who designed their life. He loves them. So that's why it's so important that we as His body, His hands and His feet, and in times like this, we are His voice, that we stand up for life. And we let the world know that God loves every single life, whether they are born or unborn. Whether they've made mistakes or their life is in the beginning stages and haven't had a chance to make a mistake yet. God loves every single person. So we, as God's church, we need to stand up and stand for life because it is a matter of life and death. It is for the life of the innocents. The life of these babies. You, for those of you here today, your parents, your grandparents, maybe a, an aunt or an uncle, or maybe you just have little ones that you, you love so much, you call them your very own. They may not be yours biologically, but you just have a, a connection with them. You see that value. You, you look in their eyes and you know there's something special there. We need, to, we need to be the voice in the world that's crying out. We need to be the voice for God looking out for the innocent. So God is a God of love. He's a God of life. He's a God who's looking out for the for the innocent. So what can you do? The first thing we can do as followers of Christ, those who are sharing His heart and, and loving the innocent, desiring for life, trying to protect the innocent, the first thing we can do is pray. In fact, for the math, the first thing we got to do is pray, the last thing we got to do is pray, and everything in between is bathed in prayer. So before we even go another second in the service, I want us to bow and pray for the innocent, for these babies, for ministries like Abria. So we bow and be in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we just come before your throne right now. Father, we petition you. We pray, Father, for the tragedy, for the, the things of this world that do not bring you glory, like abortion. For the devaluing of life that you call valuable. Father, I pray that you will forgive us. Forgive our sins. Forgive us as a church for not knowing more. Father, I pray that you will help us, help us to, to stand upon your word and to speak up for your truth. Father, I pray for those right now, this very, very moment, who are in the midst of a crisis and they don't know what to do next. Father, I pray that you point them in the right direction, point them to facilities like a burrito so they can receive the life-affirming truth, so they can hear your truth to them, not just for the baby, but for them themselves. Father, I pray for your hand a blessing be upon the crisis pregnancy centers across our country and across our world. 
that you will use them in a mighty way. And we thank you for what you have already done in the lives have already been saved and changed through them. But Father, we pray. We pray that you will continue to use them in a mighty way. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So you can continue to pray for these pregnancy centers. You can also give. If you were here earlier in the first part of our service, maybe you came in late and you weren't here for that, but you can pick up a baby bottle before you leave. You can place money in those baby bottles. That's just a small portion that you can do. You might want to get, become a, a monthly contributor to a brand. You may want to go to their, their gala. I don't know, we all invited that? Our gals were not. That we, we, we had a limited space. So we couldn't all go to that. You might want to be able to step it up another area of giving to help them do what it takes. A pregnancy test, they aren't just given to the centers. The, the medical equipment they have is not free. It, it takes funds to operate a medical clinic like the Bridge. So you might feel led to give. Maybe God's calling you here today to volunteer and serve. And that would be a great resource for you to go and talk to about how you might get involved and how you can be a servant of the Lord at a Christ of Pregnancy Center. But another thing that we can do is we can educate. You know, I, I always said, and, and I, I got control from my boss for, for saying this very thing, but my goal of where we were in Anderson County, Tennessee, is to run ourselves out of business. And my boss was looking at me and saying, Chris, don't say that. I said, but it's true. I want every single person to be, to be educated on life and to affirm life and to the point where they don't even need to come to us anymore. Now, we're living in a fallen civil world. That will never happen. But you and I, we can all reach one person. We can all reach a family member or a friend or somebody who is in that moment of crisis and doesn't know where to turn. You can be the person to help them choose life. You can educate. Educate through God's Word. Educate by sending them to a Bria. Probably a lot of young ladies and even young men right now that are in a crisis don't know where to turn. They don't even know that a Bria exists. But today, you might know that friend or family member you can point them in the right direction to help them get the, the help they need so they can hear God's voice telling them that He loves them. He loves life and He's looking after the innocent. What about you here today? I want you to realize that God loves you. God designed you, He created you, He made you in His image. And He desires to have a relationship with you. If you're here today and you've never trusted Him as Lord and Savior of your life, then today He wants to give you life. He wants to give you eternal life. This time of invitation will be your opportunity to come and receive Him as Lord of your life. Maybe you're here today and God's placed a burden on your heart. God will be telling you about how you can give more, how you can serve, how you can do things that help in a crisis pregnancy center. You might come and pray with prayer altar. God may be speaking to you about something entirely different today because that's the way the Holy Spirit works. Right now is the time for you to listen. Right now is the time for you to respond to His call. So whatever it is He's telling you to do, I want you to obey. Our Heavenly Father, we come to you this time with invitation. We give it to you. We pray that your spirit draws us, changes us, and makes us exactly who you desire for us to be. So, Father, as we sing our hymn of invitation, God, I pray that we respond to your call and you will be pleased with our obedience to you. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. I invite you to stand with me here this morning.